Hi everyone, may we kindly ask for um, you to put your phones in a silent mode and also taking pictures and videos are prohibited. And please kindly take your seats. Thank you.
May we please all rise to welcome the bride. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to King's Church here in Blackpool. My name is Pastor Chris, and it's so good to see everybody here at such a great, momentous occasion at the wedding of Joe and Jen. You look fantastic, don't they? Give a big round of applause. Welcome to everybody who's online. Uh, as well, it's good you can join us at late in the evening, I guess, all of that now. And uh, if you've got your mobile phones on, if you could turn them on silent or off, that would be fantastic. And uh, God loves weddings. In fact, he was at the first wedding, the Cana of Galilee wedding. Shall we, uh, shall we pray and stand on our feet while we do so? Father God, we just thank you that you are the God of love. You are, the Bible says, Love. God is love. And we thank you that you love weddings. You love Christian weddings where man and woman are going to be married in a holy matrimony. Father God, you are here this afternoon in the hearts of everyone who loves you and 
cares for you because you care for us. You never leave us, you never forsake us. In fact, this afternoon, you are rejoicing over this wedding of Joe and Jen because you brought them together. So Father God, we pray for the proceedings of the day. We pray for the wedding service and the, the celebrations during the day. And we pray that Joe and Jen will have a day to remember. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please take your seats. Apart from you, Joe and Jen, um, you can sit down on those seats at the front. And we're going to have Harry, who's going to bring a scripture reading. Thank you. Afternoon. The scripture reading for this afternoon is from 1 John 4, verses 7 to 12, the English Standard Version. God is love. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God, and whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we have loved God, sorry, in this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God abides in us, and his love is perfected in us. May the Lord bless the reading and hearing of his holy word. If there's one thing God loves, apart from weddings, it's when his people worship him. Yeah. And we're going to do that now. So I invite you all to stand. The words will be on the screen behind me. Hopefully most of you will know the words. But please, this is the time when we give God praise and we put him front and centre of what we're going to do today. For your mercy never fails me. And all my days have been held in your hand. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will see of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Yeah. 
Have you dressed up well this afternoon? Don't we look good? Well, I'm going to give a message to Joe and to Jen. But you know what? It's not just about them. It's about you. It's about you as well attending this Christian wedding. Has anybody seen one of the best films that I've ever watched? Four Weddings and a Funeral. Put your hand up. Fans, I've never the story where the spouses attend each other's weddings and they meet each other's partners, and they get married, and they go to the next wedding, and their spouses meet another spouse, and then they fancy each other, they end up getting married, and then they go to another wedding. Is anybody single this afternoon? Guys, is any single guys? Put your hands up if you're single. You're liars, you're liars, there's so many single. Any females that are single, put your hand up. You liars, you feathers. This ain't going well for me. Oh yes, that's one fantastic. Well, you can meet your, you can meet your spouse here. In the evening, go on the dance floor in the Imperial at seven o'clock and we'll be watching over <laughs> you. Well, the tagline in that, in that film is from females who are chatting about their future husbands or the guys they fancy. And, oh, he's, he's engaging, isn't he? And she says, you mean otherwise engaged. That is the tagline of the whole film. There's a great story of a wedding in the Bible, and it comes in Ruth, the book of Ruth. And I want to talk to you not about funerals and weddings particularly, but the title of my message is Three Funerals and One Wedding. So I've changed it. It's Three Funerals and One Wedding. There is a woman in the Bible in the roof of which there's only four chapters. It's one of the shortest books in the Old Testament. And a woman named Naomi, if you remember the story, those who know the Bible, is married to a guy named Elimelech. And they have two sons who marry. One of them marries a beautiful girl called Ruth, and the other one marries Orpah. And after 10 years of them both being married, 
Both sons die, leaving Ruth and Orpah without husbands. Both daughters-in-law are very loyal and will not leave Naomi. Loyalty in friendship is paramount. Marriage is built on love, yes, but it's built on lifelong friendship. And the Bible talks a lot about friendship. Naomi encourages the daughters-in-law to go back to the land to find new husbands. And Orpah said, thank you, I'm off. And yet Ruth says the words in Ruth chapter 1 and verse 16, and those again who know the book of Ruth will know this. It says, where you go, I will go, and where you live, I will live, and your God will be my God. Ruth decides to work in a field to get money for her mother-in-law and for the family that are remaining. And she ends up working for a wealthy farmer, and his name is Boaz, if you remember that. And he sees her in the field when he comes back from doing a land deal. He sees her working in the field, and he's looking out, and he sees this absolute doll in the field. So he asks his foreman to come over. Who's that beautiful-looking girl in the field? Oh, her name is Ruth. She came on a trip from another land, and she and she's here with um, with Naomi, who brought her. I'd like to get to know her more. I don't know about how you two guys first met, but I'm sure there must have been a he's looking quite good, isn't he? <laughs> and I'm sure Joe, yeah, she looks absolutely fantastic. I remember when me and Carolyn met. We've been married 38 years. 39 years. I was only 11 when I got married. No. <laughs> I realised that. It was a bit dodgy, and I realised that. But saying that, I remember the meeting. We both met at Sixth Form College when we were 18, but we didn't know we didn't go out with each other then. And it was when I was playing in a Christian band when I was 20 years of age, and Carolyn was 19 years of age. And I remember leading worship. God can come on you when you're leading worship. And also, you can get distracted when you're leading worship. I'm singing this God song, this is fantastic. I'm really looking out at this blonde girl, thinking I'm going to get to know her. I know her from somewhere. And at the end of the service, Caroline comes up to me and says, you're good looking, aren't you? <laughs> <We're pretty good. laughs> Pastors don't lie. <laughs> Only joking. It was the other way around, and we exchanged numbers, and I forced my number on her. And the next day she followed me back and invited uh, me out to jail. But no, there, there's always an attraction. So Boaz was looking at Ruth. And then Boaz gets to know Ruth. He protects her. He rescues her from other male interested parties who are working for him. And he promotes her to be a supervisor of the rest of the guys to protect her and gives her a better job. This is where the engagement ends because the marriage begins that day. Your engagement in about one hour, we'll finish. You are no longer engaged. You are married. You'll be married couple. This is where Boaz and Ruth eventually have a child, and his name is Obed. And Obed means servant. It means a worshipful servant. And Obed's genealogy becomes the father of Jesse. And if you know his scripture, became the father of David, becomes the father of Jesus Christ. What a genealogy line in the DNA to have. When God comes upon you, you first of all will know about it because the first thing is this. What has this got to do with this marriage today? Well, it means everything. Here's some advice I want to bring to the heart of both you two for this marriage ceremony. God is working out his plan just as he did with Ruth. Just as we did with Boaz, he's working out his plan with you, Joe. He's working out his plan in you, Joe. In fact, you may think it was a chance meeting online. We might think it was a, a, ch a chance meeting in a worship meeting. No, God preordained your marriage. He knew today on the 23rd of March 2024 that you would be married. Isn't that fantastic just to think about that alone? That he's looking upon you this afternoon, thinking, I knew you two were going to get married. Keep your eyes and focus upon me, and your marriage will last as long as you both 
shall live. So your marriage is preordained. And Ruth saw God's work at work in her life, and eventually they married, and she married Boaz. In a Christian marriage, build your life on the same values that Boaz and Ruth did. They built their lives on Christian values, on Christian principles, and it's great to have those in a marriage. The values of love for God and love for each other will continue and run right through your marriage until the end of time. In times of plenty, my advice to you both is this. Thank God and thank you for every blessing you bestowed upon you and also upon your family. Keep your faith in Jesus. Why? Because he's been with you right from the very beginning. Today is not a chance meeting that has been preordained, pre-planned by Christ himself. Marriage is where, in fact, there are two funerals today. There are two funerals. And there's one more funeral that I'll talk about, and there's one wedding. Why two funerals? Because, Joe, you're dying to yourself. You're dying to yourself. Jen, you are dying to yourself. So yourself, because the Bible says you come together where two end up completely different units. You become one. You become Mr. and Mrs. All your past, Joe, should be forgotten. All your past, Jen, should be forgotten. If there's anything you're thinking of today, well, I remember this and I ain't good enough for you and you ain't good enough for me. Forget all that. Today is a brand new start in full of God. He doesn't remember past failures. He remembers every success. And he will bless you forevermore. Keep your trust and keep your faith on Jesus. A successful marriage is this. is where each partner secretly suspects you've got the better deal. Thank you, Ben, for laughing. <laughs> because he knows he has, and I know I have. <laughs> A successful marriage is where each partner secretly suspects you have the better deal. Is that right, guys? So, John and Jen, don't try and live a single person's life. You're married, you're, you're, you're becoming married, and you are now one. Forgive quickly. Don't hang on and bury those things that aren't helpful in your marriage. The strength of a marriage is being bound together. Don't bring up each other's wrongs and keep all this. Well, in 1924, <laughs> I remember this, that, and you did this, and you did that, and when there's an argument, you open up the cupboard door, and all the things that he's done, Jen, start to reiterate, no, that does not work. It is not helpful. God does not remember that. In fact, the Bible says that all our sins are wiped away, and, we, and all things are made new when we become alive. In Christ Jesus. Is this helpful for you? As Boaz protected Ruth in the field, you are to protect your marriage. And I'm talking to you, Joe, as the, as the leader of this household, Christian household. Just as God protects his church, I'm asking you to protect your marriage. And how does that unfold? Joe, it's not your responsibility just to protect. It's God will protect you together in your marriage if you give everything to him. Don't control, protection is not control. Protection is championing your wife. And Jen, you've got to champion your husband. All his successes, even in his failures, his times of weaknesses and disappointments. Stand by him, I know you will. Champion him, he is your husband, preordained by Jesus Christ. Don't be ever apart too long. Why? Because you need each other. Ruth said this, where you go, I will go. Where you live, I will live. And your God will be my God. You see, as I wrap this up, your marriage has a great future in Christ Jesus, just as Ruth and Boaz had a great future. God loves Christian marriages just as he loves the church. In fact, God says, you are my bride. You are the bride of Christ. Your marriage will have a successful future if you keep your eyes on him and make him number one in your marriage. Individually, the support that you will get 
through the unity of marriage far exceeds being on oneself. Two is always better, the Bible says, than one. Finally, Ruth and Boaz started their marriage and gave birth to the greatest promise of salvation this world can ever know. Right the way through at the very beginning, as I mentioned, Jesus came out of the marriage of Ruth and Boaz through the line of David. There's a promise in your marriage. Your marriage is the start of something fantastic. Through your children and children's children, remember this day, because God will be in it. Keep him in, the, in, in, your, in your mind's eye. Love God. Let him become first in your marriage. And all these things will be added unto you if we seek him first. Your marriage is a promise from Jesus Christ. It's the foundation for a successful future. It's a covenant. And it's not just a contract. It's a legal contract, yes. But it's a covenant between you, Jen, and you, Joe. Remember this day. When, when days are hard. Remember the love that you had when you first met each other. That love will last forever if you remember the first day and the day of your marriage. Marriage is not an institution, just. It's a devotion. A devotion to each other. So, my final comment to you is this, Joe and Jen. When you celebrate your anniversaries, 39 this year, I forgot what to buy. I can't, she has everything. Remember this. You're celebrating not the amount of years you spend together, but the amount of years God has kept you together. You're remembering the love that you've got for each other every year. You're remembering the trust that you've got in each other. You remember the partnership that God has forged upon your life. You are remembering all the tolerance, the patience, because you'll need a lot of that in marriage, a lot of patience and tolerance, and a lot of tenacity. God is love. God, everything. A marriage is by chance. God has preordained this marriage for you, and He promises to be with you till the end of time. Amen. Amen. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. I am now going to pass over to Pastor Nathaniel. Thank you. As Pastor just concludes his heartfelt message for the beloved couple, let us not take heed of his words of wisdom and blessings. With Pastor Chris' message echoing in our hearts, we now transition to Reverend Nathaniel Osorio, who will continue to lead us in the sacred celebration of love and unity. Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, beloved families, today we gather here to celebrate a beautiful union, a fusion of two vibrant culture, British and Filipino, coming together in love and harmony. As we continue to embark on this journey of love and unity, let us embrace the richness of diversity and the beauty of traditions from both worlds, creating a tapestry of shared values, customs, and dreams. Today, we witness not only the joining of two hearts, but also the blending of two distinct heritages, symbolizing the power of love to transcend the boundaries and unite us all. Can I invite Joe and Jen to be here in the front, please? May we welcome Aaron Rothman, who will serve as the coin bearer for this special ceremony. May the coins exchanged today serve as a tangible reminder of a couple's covenant with each other and with God. And now, let, let us witness this beautiful tradition unfold as Jen and Joe exchange coins symbolizing their promise to provide for each other and to share in all of life's blessings. Can you halfway give it to Jen? Uh, Joe, may you repeat after me? Jen, I give you this coin, I give you this coin. a 
as the pledge of my love and devotion, promising to cherish and uphold you and to honor our partnership with faithfulness and integrity. Jen, may you repeat after me. Joe, Joe. As, I accept this coin, as I accept this coin, I pledge to honor, pledge to honor and support you, and support you to, share in the blessings to share in the blessings of our union, of our union and to trust, to trust in God's provision, God's provision for our journey ahead. May we invite our Bible bearer, Justin John, as we continue in the celebration of love and commitment. We now turn our attention to a cherished tradition, the presentation of the Holy Bible. Reading is from Paul's first letter to Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8, 4 to 8. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. This is the word of God. The Bible is the symbol of your submission to God, giving Him the authority over your marital life, being the head of the whole family. May you hold the Bible together and may you repeat after me. Then, though, may you repeat after me. I promise before God that with this Bible, I desire to follow God's ways and encourage you as my spouse to do the same. I also commit to God that I will love Him more than I love you as evidence of my love for you. Today, I recognize that without Him, there is no us. May God bless our family. May we call on the veil sponsors, Jose Tundag and Kenya Tolentino, to place the veil on the couple. By placing the veil over the head of the woman and on the shoulder of the man, we are affirming the biblical principle of the headship of man. As we read in the scriptures, the woman was taken from the man's side, not from his head to rule the man, not from his feet to be trampled upon by him, but by his side, to be a help and support to him from under his arms to be protected by him and near his heart to be loved and cherished by him. Let us now invite the court sponsors, Kim Ramos and Maida Batalan, to come forward and place the court. Court symbolizes that marriage is a lifelong and unbreakable bond. 
by tying these two people together, we are affirming the biblical teaching that God intended marriage to last a lifetime. As we intertwine these two souls, we echo the divine decree that marriage is a sacred covenant designed by God to endure through all seasons of life. May we request the principal sponsors to please stand. And to all the Ninos and Ninas, may you all stand up please, all the principal sponsors. All right, beautiful and handsome Nino and Nina. Okay, back in the Philippines, we call them Nino and Nina, and we always do the bless me the hand called Man and Paul. All right, and for you, Nino and Nina, primary sponsors, when you consented, and acted as the sponsors of this wedding, you became the second parents to Joe and Jen. Therefore, you have much responsibility to them. I now charge you to act as caring and loving parents to Joe and Jen, to assist them in their needs, both material and spiritual, and do all you can to provide them with the example and counsel that they may need in their life together. Do you promise to accomplish these duties to the best of your abilities? Thank you. May you sit down. And now, may we request the removal of bail and court. May we invite also A.J. Memorial and Lira de la Cruz for the removal of the court. May we invite Ryan Vasquez and Sarah Osorio for the removal of the veil. As we approach a pivotal moment in the celebration of love, we invite Mark Angelo Ayaman and Jacqueline Alfeche to step forward and bring forth the unity candle. This symbolic gesture represents the merging of two lives into one, illuminated by the light of unity and love. In this moment of unity and love, we gather around the symbolic light of the unity candle, which is the middle candle is Jesus, symbolizes Jesus Christ as its central flame. As the couple approaches to light their individual candles, they symbolize their journey together, seeking the light of Christ as their guiding people. Should the flame of either candle falter in times of darkness and uncertainty, let it serve as a reminder for the couple to turn to Jesus. Sometimes Jen will experience, experience weakness in her faith, and sometimes she might depend on Job, and vice versa, Job. At times, he will find uncertainty, some problems in life, and he will seek uh, encouragement from Jen. But at times that Jen and Job are there, are in their weakness, they can find their refuge, they can find their strength in Christ. And that's the importance of, of Jesus being the center of the marriage of their relationship. And in his presence, there is always warm comfort and the promise of new beginning. 
Yeah, you may sit down. As we continue the sacred ceremony, we now come to a moment of transition in the presence of our ministers, Reverend Nathan, having graced us with his wisdom and blessings. Now prepares to step aside as we welcome back Pastor Chris Jones to lead us further in the celebration of love and commitment. Thank you, Pastor Nathan. Wasn't that fantastic? Yes. Yeah. Was it just me enjoying it? Well done, well done. Really, really good. It's so good for, uh, for those who aren't Filipinos to be part of this. It's just a, a privilege uh, for us to. So now we come to the legal part. You still want to get married? <laughs> good. It cost me a lot of money this clean time. <laughs> I can't send it back to Amazon, that's for sure. Righty O then. So here we go. By the way, in the, in the MC did a fantastic job. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, wonderful. I reckon you'll have a job with Disney World in Florida with that accent. Yeah. It is such a great accent. Thank you. I am going to invite Joe and Jen to come onto stage, please, with the good looking best man of them. <laughs> Close if you can, but that's great. If you can balance on that step, that is even better. We're now going to exchange our legal and personal vows before people and before God. So listen up, folks. We're all here today to celebrate a fantastic event, to witness the marriage of Joe Wildman and Jenilyn Medina, and ask God's blessing on their future lives together. Before God, Christian marriage is a powerful step. Joe and Jen have both chosen to live for God and for each other. As Christians, they come together in a marriage that will be filled with incredible, amazing potential and purpose. Marriage is God's idea and God's design for man and for woman to live together. The decision has not been made lightly. It's a lifetime commitment, and one that they are making with deep joy or deep conviction. It is a commitment to each other and a commitment before God. From this day forward, Joe, and from this day forward, Jen, as you begin the next chapter of your lives together, you will express outwardly what you have already committed together inwardly. Joe and Jen have come here today to be joined in marriage. Therefore, if anyone can show any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, speak now or forever hold your peace. Shall I wait another 15 seconds? No. Whew. I know as you both that if either of you two, Joe or Jen, know of any just cause as to why you may not be joyfully, joyfully, lawfully joined in marriage, you must now confess it. Joe, repeat after me. I declare that I know of no legal reason why I, Joe Wildman, may not be joined in marriage to Jemelyn Medina. The peace after me. I declare that I know of no legal reason why I, Jenilyn Medina, may not be joined in marriage to Joe Wildman. Back to you, Joe. Joe, do you take this woman to be your wife, to live together in marriage before God? Do you promise to love her, honor her, bring out the best in her? and forsaking all of us to be faithful to her as long as you both shall live. I do. Jen, do you take this man to be your husband, to live together in marriage before God? Do you promise to love him, honor him, bring out the best in him, and forsaking all of us to be faithful to him as long as you both shall live? 
Who gives this woman to be married to this man? That was quick. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> well done, you are. In fact, that's the best idea I've ever heard. <laughs> Joe and Jacqueline, um, this is great, isn't it, so far today? It's wonderful. Now we're going to take part in the exchanging of rings. As a symbol of their marriage, Joe and Jen will now exchange rings with each other. And if Joe could place Jen's ring on her finger and repeat after me, Joe, as we do this part of the ceremony. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a sign of our marriage. As a sign of my, our marriage. To be with you for as long as I live. To be with you as long as I live. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have. All that I, have I, honor you. I honor you. In the presence of God the Father. The of God, the Father God the Son. And God the Holy Spirit. Jen, if you could place the ring on Joe's finger. And repeat after me. I give you this ring. I give you this ring. As a symbol of my promise to you. As a symbol of my promise to you. To be with you for as long as I live. To be with you for as long as I live. With all that I am. With all that I am. And all that I have, all that I, have I, honor you. I honor you. In the presence of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Joe and Jen have given their promises to each other in marriage. And just about got the rings on. <laughs> They've exchanged rings. They've joined hands and declared their love and their commitment to each other and before God and in front of everyone sat here today and online. As God has joined Joe and Jen together, let no one ever separate. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the name of the Holy Spirit, we pronounce them husband and wife. share some personal vows to Jen. <laughs> today I do. <did. laughs> I am thankful for you and my help I will cherish your ways and never think of I will leave you and have you as Christ did leave me. I vow to show integrity, dignity, and sound teaching as part of my life. I promise to live with you as my wife in an understanding way, show an honor to you as an equal vessel, since you are an heir with me of the grace of life. I will love you and be faithful to you alone from this day forward until God calls us home. Jen? You're going to exchange your personal vows and words to Joe. <laughs> Marco, Marco, my love, I am thankful to God for having you in my life. You are truly a gift from above. My answered prayer through you, I've come to understand. Why previous relationships faltered. They were mere steps on the path leading me to you, the best person planned by God for me. Someone who is a real Christian with true values and foundation, a loving, sweet, and thoughtful man. In the presence of God and our loved ones, I vow to build a marriage where He is our center. Together, will seek spiritual growth, finding strength and love in our shared faith. 
I promise to be a supportive and loving wife, respecting and cherishing our partnership as we navigate life's journey hand in hand. With all my heart, I promise to love and choose you each day. Despite our differences, we will be united in God, serving Him wholeheartedly and creating a godly and Christian family together. Through life's challenges and joys, I commit to stand by your side, unwavering in my love and dedication, fulfilling our vows until it's That is awesome. Can I just ask what that Filipino language <laughs> is? I choose you every day. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, that was really, really great. You both said those words to each other. Joe, you may now kiss your bride. <laughs> To, we've not finished the legal bit. It ain't legal to you sign a piece of paper. So now my wife has to Carolyn Jones, the registrar of the King's Church here in Liverpool, will now lead this part of the service. And we're going to play some music. So stay in your seats and we're going to sign the register over in the corner there. <laughs> Wipe your tears, take a breath Lay your head on my chest Let me hold you through the night Yeah, the world can bring us down But I still believe somehow It's all gonna be alright Come on, man This life will be hard, you and me When the water's rise and we face the fire, we will rest in our foundation. And on our knees, nothing between us. You mean Jesus.
chat function is not working if you are watching please send them a direct facebook message that would be great just to let them know that you're watching take a screenshot and uh, send it to them as well thank you Thank you. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, has it been great so far? Yeah. Oh, good, that's three of us. <laughs> Thanks, Rob. I want to present to you, third round, Mr. and Mrs. Wilder. to come up onto the stage and I'm going to invite my wife, Pastor Carolyn Jones, Pastors James and Sam Baker to come on stage, Pastors Phil and Lisa Daniels, albeit I want to give Phil a big round of applause with Andrew and whoever else is on sound for such a great job. And also Pastor Nathan and Pastor Sarah to come on stage and we're now going to pray for this beautiful couple. One by one, two one by one, one all of us, all of us are right. I'll start. Go. I thought, thought we'd lost Pastor Lisa there, <laughs> but she's there. Shall we pray? If you are Christians and you believe in prayer, then we actually want to raise your hands over this couple as we pray. Father God, we just thank you for Mr. and Mrs. Wildman. We thank you for Joe, and we thank you for Jack. We thank you that you're in this marriage now. You've always been in their lives. We let no man put asunder what you join together. We thank you, God, that you have anointed this marriage with your love. Three cords that cannot be broken are entwined together with Jesus right in the very middle. We pray that for you both today, you'll enjoy, you remember today. You remember the love you had at the very beginning, and that love will see you through. But God is love. Yeah. And we pray that God is over you in your marriage, in your children, in your grandchildren, in your great great grandchildren, children. We pray, God, that is something that is going to be generationally for good. Yeah. And that over every generation, the love of God will come right through the DNA of this beautiful couple, just like Boaz and Ruth, there is a promise that starts today, in Jesus' name, amen. amen. God, thank you so much for Joe and Jenna. Thank you for everybody in this room, Lord, and everybody watching at home. God, what a blessing it is and a privilege to be here and to be able to witness this in front of you as well, God. I thank you so much for your plan and your purpose on their lives. I thank you that you brought them together like you have for the experiences, for the thoughts, for the love that they have for each other. And from this day on, I pray that their love gets stronger and stronger every single day. God, that they cherish each other and cherish you. God, bring them together closer than ever before. Lord, to be able to go through the joyful times, the hard times, Lord, and to be able to rest upon you. I thank you for Pastor Chris's message and um, the, the, just the goal that was in that world yeah. for them as they're starting yeah. this journey together. 
but I pray that they enhance each other yeah. and they make each other better. Yeah. They bring out new skills, Lord, new talents for each other, Lord, and just encourage each other every single day of their lives from now on. Jesus, I thank you in your name. Amen. Yeah, God, we just thank you, Lord, for Jen and for Joe and God. And such a beautiful, beautiful couple. And God, we pray your blessing upon them. God, I just thank you for that Bible, God, that's just been presented today. That God, may that just come alive to them, God, every time they read it. God, may you guide them always. God, it said in your word to trust you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understandings in all of our ways. Just trust you and you will make our path straight. So, Father, God, let's pray for straight paths ahead. God, for just clear skies. God, we know that life is a journey, but God, I just thank you that Jen and Joe found each other. God, they found strength in one another. And God, we just pray for an amazing life together. And God, and thank you for blessing us and their friends and family and, and just God, just, just that we get to share them and be with them, God, on this journey. So, Father, we just pray your incredible blessing on this day. God, we thank you for them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Lord, we pray for Joe and Jen, truly that you are the center of their marriage, you are in the center of their relationship, and truly we live up their lives right now, and we pray that you would cover them with your blood that was shed on the cross, that you would protect their marriage, Lord God, and Lord, we just pray that your blessing will be upon them, and whatever might be the circumstances, whatever might be the challenges that they may face, I pray that you would, you would be their strength, that you would be uh, envelop them, Lord God, with your presence. And Lord, I pray that this wonderful couple will experience this wonderful journey of love, unity, and harmony in their life. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Wonderful. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Great, we're coming to the end of fantastic service. We're going to be singing a song now from um, our King's Plan band. We will lead us over to Chris, who will lead us in. So, thanks, Chris. We're going to sing the blessing. The blessing over Joe and Jen. The blessing over you guys as well. Because God wants to bless you. We want to celebrate this day and thank you for allowing us to be part of that. So let's stand. Lord bless you.
ceremony and Joyce is going to say something, I've had a live. Come in, Joyce. <laughs> Let's just welcome again our newlyweds, Mr. and Mrs. Joe Wildman. We're now going to, uh, great notice. We're now going to exit um, this auditorium, we call the auditorium. Uh, we'd love to see you. Please, if you've got confetti, do us a favour. Either stay behind the movement up yourself, or wait until you get outside before you throw it. Turn around you guys, a big round of applause for Mr. 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 Mr.
Thank you. I will live stream the speeches as well uh, in a few hours' time. So if you want to come back for the speeches, then that'd be great. Thank you so much.